bill to bring doctors to Prince Edward Island to provide abortion services is being stonewalled by the PEI government. Meanwhile, Trudeau is touting gender side, and there's, well, radio silence from the MSM. You know what that means? It's time for Monday's Moral Maze. Joining me now is Campaign Life Coalition spokesperson, Tanya Granick Island. Tom, thanks, Tanya, thanks so very much for being here. Thanks for having me. Of course. Kate, so I want to start off with something I didn't even mention in the intro. There's just too many stories to discuss right now. Euthanasia in Quebec. Yes. It's back. Yes, unfortunately, this issue has rear is rearing its ugly head once more. I thought this was a dead issue once the government folded and went to election. New change of government, now liberals are in power. But they're bringing this bill back uh, where it left off prior to the dissolution of government. Wow, so at first we thought it was basically going to go out with, throw the baby out with the bath wa uh, water, uh, or in this case it might be the old person out with the bath water, excuse the, uh, the uh, terms here. But... Um, what we're seeing now is that all uh, all parties are actually saying that this is something that they'd be in favor of. Tanya, one thing that concerns me about this is the fact that they basically cloaked what is illegal in this country in euphemistic language. So medical aid in dying, this Bill 52, are we worried now that they're going to sneak this through as provincial jurisdiction as opposed to being federal jurisdiction? Well, that's exactly what's going on. And um, it's actually just completely illegal because this is a criminal matter. It's not a health matter. And we're, you're dealing with euthanasia as a treatment or as a health-related matter. I mean, it's really slap into the face of, of all uh, elderly Quebecers, for that matter. So anybody who is suffering physically or psychologically, for whatever reason, uh, will be permitted to allow a doctor to inject them. So our, now doctors are going to be viewed now as murderers, not just uh, those who provide health for the for the the ill. Yeah, and you know one thing that I say that this is going to create a license to kill. We've seen in Belgium and Switzerland and Netherlands everywhere where it's been right. instituted, there have been great uh, abuses of it. Now, talk to me a little bit. Does it also create a duty to die for the most vulnerable? I think the most vulnerable will feel a duty to die. You're right. Um, I think someone who is suffering with, say, with Alzheimer's or something, will feel that, you know, they're just a burden in society because look at this healthcare system. It's already suggesting that I should be offed because I'm, I'm ill, I'm suffering. When, in fact, we should be spending our resources in, in palliative care, in alleviating the suffering of those. And we have those means. So why are we jumping the gun here? Why are we just looking to off people, especially the elderly who've, you know, spent their whole life providing and paying tax dollars into the system, why don't they reap the benefits of the healthcare system we have here in Canada? Now, I want to switch gears a little bit here. Speaking of alleviation of suffering, Justin Trudeau can't get any alleviation from his comments. He continues to just put the foot deeper into the throat, uh, told our Marissa Semkiev that um, he's okay if a woman wants to commit gendercide, if she wants to abort a baby just because it's a girl. But doesn't this make sense for Justin Trudeau to say? Oh, Justin Trudeau is ridiculous, and I'm sorry to say that, but he, he just gets my goat. Um, <laughs> you know, this is coming from a guy who has already expressed his admiration for countries like China, where they have such an imbalance of boys versus girls, and guess why? Because they abort all the little girls, because you can only have one child in China, uh, where there are 40 million more men than women in that country. So am I shocked that Justin Trudeau thinks gendercide is perfectly fine and is enshrined in some mythical woman's right to choose in this country? Absolutely no, I'm not shocked. It's disgusting. I think there should be no woman in this country who should feel comfortable with him as a leader of a party, let alone a prime minister in the future. But yet, you know, there are a lot of women in mainstream media. Um, talk to me from the, your vantage point at Campaign Life Coalition. Is this story, especially with this new dimension of gendercide, right. is it gaining the media attention that it deserves? The, ge the gendercide traction, no. And I'm, I'm really glad that Marissa Semkew did bring this out and, and question home. But no, I've, I've, you know, a quick look through of all the national papers or media outlets shows that nobody is actually covering the gender side angle. Because you know what? The media has their heads in the sand. They don't want to talk about Canada's dirty little secret. Because yes, unlike China, we too have sex-selected abortions in this country. And it's an issue that no government, including the current Conservative government, doesn't want to touch. And that's an embarrassment. Certainly. Now, I do want to talk a little bit now about uh, abortion elsewhere in the country where we're seeing the exact opposite. While technically abortion is, dirty little secret, legal during all nine months, it's government funded in, in many provinces, 100,000 every year uh, uh, fetuses aborted on top of the 4 million already aborted. I mean, this is, this is not a little secret. It's a pretty big secret. Um, uh, Talk to me a bit about PEI, because my understanding is there, there's what there's there's no abortions that go on there. Or what's the story there? Well, there are no abortions that actually take.
take place within PEI. However, if a woman wants to have an abortion, she can seek one out of province, which is currently the practice. They go to um, Halifax uh, Hospital and whatnot. So the current premier, uh, liberal premier of PEI, said that he he you know, he supports a woman's right to an abortion. However, he wants to keep things the status quo in PI. Um, but unfortunately, um, the Canadian Director of the National Abortion Federation is putting a lot of pressure and they're trying to present a case now where they can now bring in doctors to PI to perform these services so women won't be, quote unquote, inconvenienced of ridding off their offspring. How do you think he's going to fare going forward? Well, I think PI, being it's a smaller province, I think there and, and 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 again the majority of canadians do want restrictions on abortion so I, I think he'll just continue with the status quo but you know the abortion rights groups are very aggressive and they're putting a lot of pressure but you know there was just a march for life in actually in charlottetown yesterday where several hundred pro-lifers came out and to defend the rights of the unborn even though abortion technically can happen in pei now i want you to kind of wrap this up in a nice little bow for me because as far as i'm concerned euthanasia uh, we're seeing it now trying to come through the back door in the legislature provincial we're, we're seeing bills being put forward by the Conservative governments in the federal legislature. We're now seeing it being brought before the courts in B.C. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, we've got different ends of the spectrum with abortion. A national leader who is a contender for our prime minister, um, who is okay with any sort of abortion during all times, no matter the reason. What is the future of the pro-life movement in this country? Is it a dark one or is there some bright light? No, I, I think there's tons of optimism. Again, the majority of Canadians want some restrictions on abortion. The polls speak for themselves. 92% of Canadians want sex-selected abortion, gender side, illegal. So I think there's a lot of room. What I think is happening, though, is the stymieing of democracy in this country by leaders such as Justin Trudeau. This must not be allowed to happen. We need to have democracy. That's what Parliament is for. So as pro-lifers, especially Campaign Life Coalition, being the political arm for the pro-life movement, we will definitely keep rallying to make sure that the rights of the unborn continue to be addressed. You know what? In that sense, I'm pro-choice, and so far as I wish I had a choice for a pro-life candidate in our national legislature. Thank you so very much, Tanya. Thank you.